Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the Aft Deck. Where each week we recap an episode of Bravo's hit reality TV show, Below Deck. Hi, Lanes. Hi, Carla. Tonight we're having something different. Mm. We're having a an actual cheers. Cheers. It's made in Australia. It's sparkling water, lime juice, lime juice, and vodka. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's recap is Below Deck Down Under, Season 2, Episode 9, Angel Nude Cake. In this episode, Culver has the controls and clearly should not. The new stew, Jamie, arrives and rocks the boat big time. And Harry and Margot have their first date. But has that ship already sailed? Mm -mm. We start off where we left off with the tender smashing against the railing. Oh, my God, the tender. Oh, God. They're trying to control this swinging tender. Luckily, Captain was holding one end and was it Harry on the other end trying to hold it with a rope? Was it Harry or Adam? I, can't, I don't know. but I can't either now. They struggled to get any kind of control over it. Yeah. Because Culver's controls were not controlling anything. That's right. Culver is just like, oh, this fucking wind, bro. <laughs> and then he says, fuck this crane. Like it's swinging back and forth, like we said. It eventually smashes down into the docking thingy with a crash. Correct, with a smash crash. I like was, I thought that boat is going to be split. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't. No. And Captain Jason is immediately like, what happened? We had no control. I think you were on rabbit, not. Turtle. And if you get a swing on, that's when accidents are going to happen. It's fixable, but there are repairs to it. It's going to cost about $700. Lucky Culver. The deckies are dissing Joao for going on the kayak first chance. And I'm like, it wasn't even his choice, boys. He was asked. Take a seat. Adam walks off uh, saying, we know who's getting the helmet this charter. Well, yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> I don't know, but like, way to rub it in. Mm. The guests get back to the boat and they have drinks and the chef is making cakes for dessert to decorate the primary with. So she's dessert tonight, her body decorated by the chef. She's going to be painted in chocolate, berries, and chef is super excited. She's asking Margot if the cakes are going to be too big for her nipples. Margot's like, um, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain talks to Joie about the tender. So he's explaining that it was probably in fast mode and that maybe Culver isn't the best person to have on the controls. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Joie feels that when a captain gets involved in deck crew stuff that there's a lack of trust in the team. So he wants to prove to Jason that he can be trusted now that he's on board. Mm. I do feel that this captain is very involved very. with the day-to-day. -day. Always hands-on. Yeah. I so don't... is it hands-on or is it having to manage? He doesn't do this a lot with interior. No. I think it's a bit of both. I mean, he's hands-on with interior in the sense that he comes and runs plates, he washes up, he cooks freaking lobster and steak. He's stepping in and helping. That stuff's already organised. Yeah. The deck team, he's he's leading them. Yes, true. So it's kind of a bit different. So we've got Adam and Culver still working and Harry and Joa on a break. Margot's feeling a little something something about the new stew coming on. She's been enjoying growing. And the challenge. Yeah. She says, I'm not going to grow in laundry. So she's bummed about having to go back. If that's what she's seeing in her head, someone's going to come on, I'm going to go back to what I was doing and I'm not really excited about that, which I get. Just as she's finished saying that, the tender's approaching. Here she comes. <laughs> oh, God, says Margot. Like, far out. And Jamie's on board. Everyone is very excited to see her. What a welcome. Very happy. The stews are happy. The deck crew's happy. The chef's happy. Everyone's like, Yes. The photo on her resume doesn't do her any justice, as in real. She is absolutely stunning. She's gorgeous. Her f skin is dewy. She's glowing. <laughs> like, she's my new Fraser. Yes. She's an Aussie. Divine. She's fine with everything. She seems pretty easygoing. She's happy to do table decor. Oh, Aisha was fucking loving that. 
and she basically hits the ground running. She goes in and meets uh, Serena as she as Jamie leaves. Serena under her breath, stunning. <laughs> yeah. Adam Culver and Harry are on the deck, and they're taking a minute to admire the stunning sunset. And they're all wondering what Jawa even does. Where is he? What, what, what does this kid do, bro? We'll cut to he's cleaning the entire storage area. Yeah. He's working his ass. He's definitely a hard worker. No one's saying he's not except for the deck crew. Here comes the rain. Again. All crew in your blacks. Jamie meets Culver. And to camera, Culver is like, ha, 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 this girl is gorgeous. Gorgeous. And Jamie says, bit of foreshadowing here, dating on yachts is fun. You just forget that anyone else exists. She loves a good boatman's and she can already see some options in the deck crew. So I've noticed that every single person that meets her, the co- they comment on her looks, like Definitely. how stunning she is. So, so next is Adam. They meet. Now he doesn't say anything initially and Jamie and Margot keep getting ready for the night and this is when it happens. Adam turns around to Culver and says, great pickup, solid draft. She looks like she's going to be a great asset to the team. <laughs> solid draft. What does that mean? Is that- she's hot. Yeah, okay. Harry meets Jamie and I was like, I wonder what Harry's going to do when he meets Jamie. He's just excited she's an Aussie. Yes. He's in golden retriever mode. <laughs> he's just happy. He's happy because he's got a date coming. Margot's got nothing to worry about. Margot was ready to jump ship. Yeah. Well, that's because she was there. Yeah. And um, Harry's like, oh, you're an Aussie. And she's like, yeah, I am. Are you too? And he's like, yeah, I'm from Newcastle, Sydney. Sydney. And she's like, I'm from Perth. Margot exits stage left, whispering (laughs) under her breath, I'm from Wisconsin. (laughs) And she's off. (laughs) Well, he's smitten with Wisconsin, so he's fine. Like, she's fine. Yeah. He's a golden retriever. He's only going to focus on one thing. (laughs) He's loyal. (laughs) Uh, If people haven't listened to the prior episodes, they're not going to get my dog references. No, go back and listen to a few. (laughs) All the deck crew have been assigned dog breeds. (laughs) And if I didn't, if I couldn't (laughs) think of one that wouldn't offend someone, I just called him a bad dog. (laughs) The guests start to come up and it's a wild animal night tonight and they all look really good. Oh. But this was really cute. Sky meets Jamie and he's like, this gorgeous creature just arrived out of nowhere. Like, hello. Yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> it would be so weird though. All this stuff happens behind the scenes. Like you're just on your holiday. They didn't even notice that they were a stew down. So that's credit to Aisha and Margot in this instance. And Definitely. then all of a sudden Jamie's just there. They're in the middle of the ocean. They're like, where, from whence did you come? Yes. <laughs> did they crane you from the sky? Hopefully Culver wasn't on the controls. <laughs> so Joie and Serena are getting along very well and Culver is wanting a costume. He's like, I've got to get myself sorted. I'm CEO. I need to be on my game. What does he end up wearing, Lance? Well, he finds himself for what only can be described as Steve Irwin. <laughs> like, or... Uh, David Attenborough. <laughs> He's got khaki shorts on, a khaki shirt on, a hat with a mullet, and he's got a rope around him and he's wearing glasses. Big rimmed black glasses. So those glasses are not Steve Irwin, but everything else is. And he does try to put on an Australian accent. And I think he's buttoned down to the waist. Oh, the shirt's open. Yeah. <laughs> Chef loves it. Aisha can't speak. She's laughing so much. (laughs) And when the guests see him, Laura says, oh, my God, come discover me. She's got some great one-liners, Laura. Yes, very good. Dinner is grab my rack, which is a lamb rack, which they love. So they eat that, they clear the table, and they get the primary naked for dessert. Now, none of the guests know. This is a surprise for them. Aisha calls the crew... And says, look, I'm going to go get the primary ready over the radio. So if you want to come and watch, you know, come in about 10 minutes. And Captain Jason says back on the radio, do you really want the crew watching? Or is this like an intimate thing? Aisha's like, who do you think these people are, Captain? Watching, of course. And Which she's is right. so true. It's so true. Aisha is so excited. Serena, so excited. 
She's just hoping she doesn't cross a line. Insert cheeky face emoji. Yes. You can feel the sexual energy in the room when she starts, can't you? Oh, my God. And the prep that she's done for the correct chocolate. Yes. Like all day she's done different kinds of chocolate, like dark chocolate, milk chocolate. Which one's going to be on the body best? Laura comes out and she says to the guests, you're hungry for dessert, right? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. And she takes off her robe and she's only got a G-string on. She gets up onto the table. She straddles the table. (laughs) Margot's got her phone out filming, Harry's face again, golden retriever. And then it's like this is the first time he's seen a naked body. Honestly, Harry's mouth is just like could not get any wider. Yes. Chef takes her time. She's got this big paintbrush. She dips it in the melted chocolate and she is just mm, painting slowly painting. Everyone is getting hard. It's very sexual. It's warm chocolate. Everyone's watching. Laura's like, it's like a big, wet, warm tongue. Culver's watching every angle. Everything that Chef does is deliberate. It's like foreplay because she does this painting and then she's like spraying her with gold. She tops her with cakes. She finishes with some squirts of whipped cream and then she does this final drizzle with maple. Voila. <laughs> Dig in. I was just like, ooh, uh, mm, that, yes, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> and all the crew were like awkwardly standing in one corner like watching but no one really knew what to say. And then when the guests start eating the dessert, the crew still don't leave. No, they were. They're just still there, like starstruck. (laughs) Just can't move, must stay watching (laughs) Naked Body. Dessert's finished, and she's got to get all this chocolate off her. Yeah. Oh, someone's got to do it. Adam. I actually thought he would be the least likely person to put his hand up for that. I thought it would have been Culver. Anyway, he's doing it quite happily. And Culver's, Culver's just standing next to him watching. Just checking you're doing a good job <laughs> with his paws. <laughs> He's like, I never want this to end. Then she takes the G-string off. She's now completely naked mm. in front of Adam. He's loving it. He's not appearing shy in this moment. Absolutely not. He's embracing it. So now Joa is chatting to Serena. She's not acting how... I would to him. I would find it very difficult to even be nice to him. But she's almost going out of her way to be jokey and even flirty with him. Even flirty. But she did talk to a friend via text during the day before this happened and she was like, look, Joao's here. Oh, my God. And her friend said, look, just be his best friend and get through the charter. Yeah, but you can do that without the innuendos. Yeah. They're definitely – seem to be very comfortable with each other is what I'd say. Mm. And Aisha's disgusted by it. Yeah. She's like, gross. Serena asks if he's seeing anyone, but he's um, having a long break. He was engaged, he explains. And she fucked him over basically. Yeah. He's hurt from it and doesn't know if he can be vulnerable again. It's 11.35, so it's pretty early and the guests are heading to bed. Yes. And Joa says he's going down too. Oh, my God. Adam and Harry start bitching about Joa again. He's lazy. Can't believe he's gone to bed early. We have to split our tip with this guy. What's he done today? Kayaked. Imagine if we went to bed early. Well, first of all, he's the boss. And if he chose to go to bed early, it's actually fine. But he didn't. What's he doing? I got it. Tell me. At 11.35 when he says he's going down. He heads to the storage area. He puts on loads of towels to wash, I think. 11.45, he's moving cushions and tightening lines. 11.55, he's in the bridge checking paperwork. 12.07, he's washing up dishes. 12.21, he goes to his cabin. What they do in the show, in between each of that, they flick (laughs) back to Harry and Adam. What's he even done? 11.55, he's in the bridge. We're going to have to split our tips with him. 12.07, he's washing up dishes. So, like, they cut back and forth. I can't wait for the reunion. Oh, 
It's going to be for good. For various reasons. It's going to be good. But this kind of stuff just is so funny to me because you don't know what someone else is doing in any job really. No. And so when they're bitching about him, and they do for most of this episode, he's working his ass off. He is. And so while they're bitching, they're not working and they're actually on shift. Yeah. But they then clean up the rest of the boat. Jamie goes to bed and leaves them with the cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got this boys all right. Off I thought go. you're amazing. Thanks so much. <laughs> then Adam makes a remark, she works harder than Joa. Yeah. They were quite happy to do the cleaning. They weren't complaining about that. One forty two, Jamie goes to sleep. And now it's the morning of the last day of charter. Brecky goes off without a hitch. Aisha's putting captain's contact lenses in. <laughs> He's got an easy eye, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Joa asks Culver to meet him on the main deck. So they lift up shackles and get the anchor out of the water. Ooh, something happens here. What? Jamie likes Culver. She does. She says the boys are so helpful. And they're like, who's your pick? And she says, Culver. Aisha immediately points to Chef and says, he's hers. She's a feeder. He's an eater. (laughs) But Jamie doesn't get it. She's like, well, they're laughing about it. They're trying to give me advice. I'll proceed with caution. Yeah, We see later, Lanes. Is there any caution? None. Zero caution. It's all she, to the wind. She runs. She runs into the eye of the storm. <laughs> if you'd like to support us, go to the link in the show notes and buy us a coffee or subscribe. It's a small donation that goes towards helping us cover the costs to make our podcast. Okay, it's perfect docking. And Captain says penguin suits on, guys. Guests are departing. They cry. They have such lovely things to say about each other. Like it's really genuine. It's really nice to see. Aisha says something I think is really nice. She said, thank you for appreciating this trip so much. Yes. And then Laura says, if my ass has done anything good, it's warmed up a very special thank you. (laughs) And she pulls out the tip. So have a sweep around, rubbish off, then we'll have a tip meeting. So Culver is in with Chef. Then he's in the crew mess and Harry and Joa are taking the rubbish out. Then they're done. So Joa says, we just have this rubbish and then then we're good and they can relax. So he calls Culver to, to help and Culver's not happy because he was having a little bit of food with <laughs> Sheffy. Snacking. And then he was in the crew mess thinking, I can just sit down here and do whatever I want. At this point, Joa is literally hanging off the dock. He's got one foot. Oh, yeah. Like on the dock and and his arms are on the boat. He's essentially horizontal. Yeah, pushing it apart. Yeah, to try and fix this fender. Yeah. Now, if if he fell. (laughs) He would have landed on the fender. No one would have known and he's stuck between the the boat and the dock. I actually didn't think about that. Everything I think about. (laughs) Is safety. Is safety. (laughs) Or the worst case scenario yes. of any situation. So I was like, far out. Um, meanwhile, again, Adam is asking where Joa is. While he is literally putting his life on, on the line. line. <laughs> yeah. And this is the precedent that Luke has set up also because the role of the bosun is to lead, delegate, oversee. You don't have to do everything that your team is doing. Correct. Adam. He says, would it would be a lot easier for four people, right? Well, like, why should Joa be taking the rubbish out? Yeah, he might have other things to attend to. Captain tells him that the stainless steel crew people are there to fix the railing. So that's when Joa asks the team to help remove the railing. And again, Adam, he's just here to collect a paycheck. Yeah. I can't with Adam at the moment. Yes. He does like to find something to complain about, doesn't he? Yeah, now First I'm just it was gonna... the safety and now it's Joao. How many years' experience do each of them have? Because this Adam seems to know a lot of stuff. And yeah. Joao has six years of yachting experience, four years of captaining smaller vessels, and now he's wanting to captain larger vessels, right? So it's 10 years all up. Adam has one year <laughs> experience. Of boat school. Mm. He's just more qualified. Because it's all been, it's all on paper, not in practice. One year. Sit down, Adam. Sit down. 
honestly, 10 years versus one, tip meeting. <laughs> Culver, of course, gets the helmet for tripping up, Captain. Yep. And the tip is 20,000 US dollars, which is 1,000. One, six, six, six each. Devil's number. Lane, so you're going to take a guess tonight. <sighs> Don't say do I have to because last week you guessed I it. I nailed it. Yeah, I know, but like exactly. that so was just a guess. One, six, six, six. I'm going to say 2,100. Close. 2,584. And Jamie kindly wants to offer some of hers to the crew. Yeah, which is nice. Very nice. Captain says, well, you sort that out between yourselves, maybe shout drinks. Yeah. And Harry gets ready for his date. He wants to do the cheese board. I love that he wants to do the cheese board. Mm. Doesn't want to put anything else on Sheffy. So there's a cheese board, there's champagne, there's a sunset. Lanes, it's looking good. And the bean bags. Beautiful setup. <laughs> Margot <laughs> is getting ready. Nice dress. What's your ideal first date, Lanes? I don't know. It's been so long. Probably um, a really nice meal. Mm. I was going to say the same, like dinner. Good wine. Yeah. I want to do something fun. Food, wine and laughter. Yeah. Good combination. Yeah. So the date, it's okay, it's sweet, it's awkward. It flow, ebbs and flows like a first date would, I guess. He's really nervous. Yeah. And then he decides to argue over the pronunciation of algae. It really puts a dampener on things and then it rains. Yeah, I think that was a bit. Not boating well? <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they move inside and Margot says, look, I'm just keen to have a dance, remember our song. And he's like, no, what song? And she was like, Dancing Queen. And he was like, oh. It just, it flopped. Yeah, but then she kisses him. Yeah, because she says, I hate hurting people's feelings. Oh, fucking hell. They both walk away saying, oh, it was great. Really good. Both being polite. Except that when Aisha asks Margot how it was, she says, when your tongue's touched, did your fanny feel tingly? Oh. <laughs> and she's like, no, it didn't. It wasn't electric. And then good advice again. Aisha says, well, you can just be special friends. Yep. Adam and Serena are on the dock having a cigarette. And she asks, how, how was deck today? Like, how do you like you are? And uh, Adam goes in for the kill there. He says, <laughs> like, he hasn't helped them with shit. He doesn't like him. So Serena's like, well, are you going to speak to him about that or do you want me to? Won't be good coming from the chef. Yeah. Good honour. You want to complain? Take it to the person you're complaining about. Yeah. I appreciated that. Yeah. So they're off to dinner. In the car, Aisha starts on chef saying, you look really comfy with the womanizer. Aisha is not happy with what she's seeing, these little interactions between chef and Joao. And chef's like, no fucking way. Not after what he did to my best mate. That is not going to happen. Then they go to the dinner and she says it again at the table. She says, you're really all over him. You're acting like his best friend and you just seem like you want his dick a bit. Mm. Chef's like, no, trust me. But I see where Aisha, like I felt the same thing. I was like, you're being overtly friendly here. Yeah. Like if you hate him so much, you're really going out of your way to make sure he's feeling comfortable. And it doesn't look put on. It no. looks like quite a comfortable, natural interaction between them. Yeah, like she's happy to see him because obviously they've had a lot of time together with their past being in relationships with both of their best friends. Well, maybe, but he says earlier that she, she thinks she knows me, but all she really knows about me is what she's heard. Mm, yeah, that's true. So I don't really know. I'm a bit confused. And Aisha's confused too. Yeah. She's like, mm, I'm not sure. And Chef is like, don't worry, I've got it, nothing's going to happen. Then, Ser and then Serena goes straight over to Joie and, and gets into that deck crew talk. Oh, yes, that's right. So she completely tells Joao exactly what the crew are saying about him. She just tells him that the bosun before you was very hands-on all the time with them and the crew are not feeling that. And he's not working, he's just telling us what to do. And then Joao goes in. He's like, oh, fuck that. I'm not their friend. I'm their fucking boss. Yeah. Culver is the laziest deckhand he's ever worked with. He looks like he's working, but he's not. Adam has a higher qualification than I do, but there's nothing that's proven his knowledge. Yeah. 
That's what he says about his team at this point. And I agree with him. Same. Serena now feels terrible for bringing it up. She feels like she's broken the boy's trust. But he's like, look, thanks for telling me. I won't say anything. But the other thing about Serena feeling terrible for bringing it up, she's a lead. It's an appropriate conversation to have, I think. Maybe not at the bar, but yeah, fine. It's 9.55. We see Jamie and Culver at the bar and she says straight up, Chef has a crush on you, but I'd really love to kiss you. If you wanted to respect Girl Code, that is not what you say. No. I'm also disappointed with Culver. Fuck yes. What does he say next? I'm not opposed. Then he says, I know, but I'm all about you. Culver, you're not a nice dog. No, Culver, tonight you're a bad (laughs) dog. (laughs) They get on the dance floor and then next minute they're pashing right in front of Chef. Yep. Is he ever going to eat again? (laughs) No, he's (sighs) going to get the scraps from the dog bowl. (laughs) (laughs) So Chef is off, rightly so. But Joa sees there's something wrong and he's very kind there. He's like, are you okay? Yeah. She's like, no, look, Joao is consoling her. It cuts over to Culver and Jamie again and we hear Culver say, look, I don't want you to get stabbed, but I love the kiss. And she says, oh, my God, we're so done. And then they just keep kissing. They don't fucking care. No, they don't. And I've done some, you know, public reactions here. Okay, Lance. So on the old Twitter sphere, people didn't like it. At Avidly Watching says, Culver is doing with Jamie exactly what Serena thinks Shawa did to Serena's friend. Okay. So... Wagro Bainet <laughs> says, how does Chef not see that Culver is exactly Joie five years ago? He's a player and lazy and awful. Okay, so this isn't going well for Culver or Joie. Culver doing what Culver does. Yes, I That's agree. That's from one chicklet. And then another one says, okay, Culver, she's pretty, but calm down. Exactly. And one, one person also says, Culver's about to find out he's not getting fed anymore. <laughs> So can we make a prediction, Lance? Well, I'll tell you what I thought and we'll see. About Chef and Joao. That's what I'm asking you about. Okay. Because the end of this was Culver kissing Jamie, that's cut that, severed that tie between Chef and Culver. So now I think um, Chef and Joao may, in fact. I 100% think They will. Okay. I'm putting it out there right now. They are going to shag. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) We do hear sex noises in the next episode coming up. Oh, it could be anyone, couldn't it? Well, I thought it was Culver and Jamie. Jamie. Maybe it's not. We're just going to have to watch and find out. So stay tuned, everyone. Who will it be making the sex noises in cabin C? (laughs) I just want to quickly say this is not below deck related, but we've got the Matildas playing tonight. Yes. Go the Tildas. Go Matildas. We're playing for third place in the World Cup and I will see you at your house soon, Carla. (laughs) Very soon. Have a great week. Bye. Bye for now. If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafdeck.pod. Or send us an email on theafdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. 